Hi, I'm Mike Maloney, and welcome to another CSRM podcast. Today's episode is hosted by Dr. Greg Linville. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another CSRM podcast. Uh, I'm Dan Stover. I'm joined with Scott Steven and also Matt Hayden today from Tri Village Christian Church in Pataskala, Ohio, just east of Columbus. And you might be recognizing the background looks different. Uh, that's because we are at our annual CSRM staff and board retreat in Columbus, Ohio. So we're actually in person, which is nice, instead of just being over Zoom. We are continuing on. This is now part three of the series we started about uh, looking at this relationship between the senior minister and the sports minister. And we spent a couple sessions talking about some key tips of what the senior minister, senior leader, senior pastor can do to make the sports minister uh, and his ministry most effective. Uh, today, we have a little bit of a different perspective. Uh, although Matt has done uh, a lot of different roles within the local church, I think uh, it's, a, it's a healthy perspective. So Matt, tell us uh, a little bit of who you are and, and what you do at your church. Yeah, so uh, my, my name is Matt Hayden. Uh, I'm the Outreach and Middle School Minister at uh, Tri-Village Christian Church, 20 minutes east of Columbus. I've had a variety of uh, experience already with sports ministry. I've got the first, uh, I guess, vision given to me to run with sports ministry in 2019 and then uh, enter COVID in 2020. So we've, we've had to adapt quite a bit. The, the nice part with what we were, we were doing too is uh, we were building from the ground up so we, we didn't have to adapt as other ministries go but I, I'm currently outreach of middle school and part of outreach is, is sports as well. So outreach, missions, I oversee a middle school youth group but then kind of do sports on the side right now. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. So, so tell us, um, knowing who your senior pastor is, uh, and knowing you've been there for about eight years, is that right? You've been on staff for about eight? It'll be complete eight, eight years in October. Okay. Yeah, so November will mark the start of the new year. <laughs> awesome. So um, you've been on staff for quite a while. Uh, your church is a growing church. Mm -hmm. uh, you wear a lot of different hats. Um, Matt, I think a, a great place for us to just dive in is what would you say to the average person who probably wears multiple hats, including sports, like you have, what would you say to them to, to really strive to do to make their relationship work with the senior minister? Why, why is, is that important and what practical steps could you, could you share? Yeah. Yeah, I think really uh, as far as connecting with the senior minister or leadership in church, really three things I think come, come to my mind. You mentioned the relationships. That was my, what might have been another ingredient in there. But uh, in that, is, uh, first is communication. Uh, the, the more that you can communicate, uh, the better, I, I think. I would communicate um, upcoming upcoming events, uh, what, what, what's working, what's not, uh, wh where you, uh, they could be of help, uh, how you can be of help for them. I mean, listening to see their perspective, too, I think is vital. Uh, the second area, and I, I would say this would expand even beyond senior ministry, just whether it's volunteers or uh, other ministry staff you're working with, is collaboration. Uh, it seems like the more, uh, at least in our context, the more that we collaborate with others, uh, the, the more successful the events go. Uh, and I think sometimes we can get our, in our own lanes in ministry, uh, but I have found when we can collaborate with one another, and that, to me, extends beyond even just the senior minister and sports minister, but to other staff. Uh, some examples of that uh, for us have been, uh, we, we have a night. Nice, uh, a lot, a big property, I guess you could say, yeah. that we can host uh, sports for uh, youth leagues, and we've hosted a flag rugby league. We, we have a youth football team practicing right now on our uh, on our property uh, during the week. But I've invited our children's director to be a part of that, and so uh, I communicate. There's a communication piece with her, you know, that I don't expect her to be there every day. That's not really her th sports, not her lane, but. 
uh, the children is very much what she does. And so if she can come by a few yeah. times during the season to connect, maybe hand out invites or uh, some snacks and, and be a face. Uh, but, but likewise, you know, there's times where I'll offer to help her with something that she's doing. So there's, there's a working together uh, with, you know, children and sports. Um, but the, yeah, there's a collaboration piece. So communication, collaboration, and and then I don't I, I don't have a C for this other one. But this may come up in other questions as we go too. But I've I've noticed uh, being being aware of what I like to call God waves. Yeah. Um, it's uh, the concept that came from Rick Warren is where I think I first learned about that. But uh, he comes from a context on California, which uh, has a lot of waves. I don't get to experience that here in Ohio, no. but. Uh, but that waves, you don't create them. They're just, they're, they're there, they're not there. And when they're there, you've got to learn to surf them. Uh, and as far as ministry goes, when you see something's working, run with it. Yeah. Uh, and and just being open with that as a, a as a staff, I think is very important. Matt, tell me when you get the opportunity to influence your senior minister um, towards a sports ministry and its value. And I think the things you just shared would all help with that. But... Is there anything else intentionally that you would do? Maybe um, I'm thinking about you get to preach also mm-hmm. uh, throughout the year uh, at different times. So is there something that maybe you work into a sermon or like what what do you do to intentionally uh, get the senior minister to value sports as a viable ministry within your church? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, for, for that one is a little more challenging for us just in the sense that sports um, is something that very much adapted. There's many other ministries and programs that we've had prior to sports, and and so it's taken a little bit of time to to develop and work. Uh, I think the more that you can keep it in front of the congregation is important. I mean, whether it is as you mentioned, sermon illustrations or examples, uh, we have um, a little bit of a co- culture in the congregation. But every five to six weeks, we try to have a missions moment, and so trying to work that in where. Um, myself or a sports ministry representative could come share just a summary to the congregation during the worship services uh, but but then uh, not only share a summary of what's happening but then a pathway for involvement uh, that's been successful that's gone beyond just sports ministry but also for for missions or outreach that we do as a church too uh, that, that that's been very helpful and then I think just getting conversations with senior minister and staff about what's what's working and what's not I think when when we see a fruit or a pathway to fruit that's happening uh, it, it's a lot easier to be able to uh, keep running with it yeah. uh, but likewise I think having the communication if there's something we're we're missing the mark in uh, being open and honest about how we can uh, correct and move forward and when we find something that's really working continue to run with it one example in our context and uh, as we've mentioned too uh, I've got many many hats that I'm wearing and, and sports uh, I've been asked to dial back more to focus more on our middle school because that's just what the church needs right now however uh, we've been having uh, many people come to an open gym basketball for guys and so that's one of the things that uh, communication with the staff where we have um, 35, 40 guys coming to a middle school size, middle school size gym uh, for uh, 75% of that crowd is not connected to the church. And so we've decided, well, keep running with that because there's people coming into our building. So f- <laughs> keep utilizing that. And, and I think the next phase is trying to, we're, we're really trying to build up to try to communicate and celebrate that with the congregation too. And as we're able to do that, I think some people either don't know or might be surprised that they want to get involved once they hear that something like that's happening. Yeah, I think the average person would be really excited when there's visible fruit like that uh, to to focus in on something that's obviously working mm-hmm. and then hopefully continue to, uh, whether it's you or someone else, give that a focus, like m- make sure that there's someone from the church mm-hmm. tied to that. Let me kind of shift gears uh, because I've been in your shoes. Uh, many people watching this podcast have, have been in, in your shoes and know there there's a, a role that patience plays. Mm-hmm. Patience both for uh, the sports minister towards leadership, but also the opposite. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about the role that patience has, has played in terms of giving your ministry time to grow. Uh, like you, you shared your story, you were tasked, hey, start a sports ministry, and then COVID hits. So mm-hmm. obviously there's going to have to be some patience because it's not going to look the exact same in 2019 than it did in 2020 mm-hmm. and then coming out of it too. So 
how how are you patient with leadership? How how do you help them to be patient with you? What are some practical tips you would give to the sports minister? Yeah, yeah, and, and some of that it, I mean we've already discussed discussed, but I mean the communication piece again, having that open conversation. I, I think from the leadership perspective, they want to see results and fruit. Uh, so communicating what what some of that is. I mean what the, what it looks like with numbers coming to open gym. Um, we've got a disc golf course on our property and how many people are coming onto that uh, how are we able to connect with the people coming on that i mean having that a uh, communication piece i think the god waves are important though too with that too as far as patience goes is where is god working and where we can discern god's work and keep running with that uh, sometimes you have to let let things go and and for for me i i'm in a season as um, I mean, and a lot of the stats say it takes about six, seven years for somebody coming into a, a gym or a field or a sports ministry before they can even begin connecting further, you know, in a church setting. And so we already have that patience. But uh, as we work, where are we seeing some results? Keep running with that. Sometimes we have to be patient and let things go yeah. <laughs> in order for others to to take the rein. Uh, I just had. Um, and so I'm kind of in that season right now is discerning what to run with our open gym. There's people coming into our building. Let's keep running with that. Uh, we we were doing an open gym volleyball. We had to decide to not uh, let that die, but it, it needs somebody else to run with it. But through basketball, I actually had a conversation with a gentleman a few weeks ago. He's had a sports management background, is relatively newer to the church, and has just asked me, how can I be involved in ministry further? So... Um, it may be that he takes over some of the sports aspects of it, and 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 so yeah, I think the communicate the ongoing communication is so vital. Uh, where are we seeing some results? Where not? But also being you know, you know, helping everybody to understand too, it does take time. So if you're expecting something that happens uh, happen within a year, it, it takes time. Uh, just heard from a, a really just kind of a unique connection with one of the guys that's been coming to our open gym. Um, I met as a seventh grader for the first time, actually through a completely different sports avenue, through rugby. I was one of his rugby coaches, and uh, he's been coming to our open gym the last several years, but uh, he graduated a few years ago from high school. Uh, he was he was just he was just baptized at a different church that doesn't even involve us, but he's been, he's been there... Uh, most weeks at our basketball so it's just it was a progression of many people plugging into his life for uh the last uh six seven years and wow. and uh, but he made a commitment recently and so it you do have to be patient sure. while you communicate while you're also discerning where do we need to continue to work and, and let god expand it more where do we need to pause and maybe regroup yeah i think those are healthy questions to ask in any role and really in any season because um, it really is about those those rhythms. Okay, what do we keep pushing forward with? What do we pause? We get in trouble when we don't pause, mm -hmm. right? Because then we just get overwhelmed. Um, Matt, tell us how someone maybe like you, uh, their senior pastor, taps them on the shoulder and says, "Hey, you're a former athlete, which you were, mm -hmm. and so your pastor probably knew that, mm -hmm. and uh, you were doing some coaching, and you've got all these other responsibilities." And probably, I'm going to guess, when you were doing youth and stuff like that, you probably included sports as a game or an activity. It's just a part of your mm -hmm. DNA. So your senior pastor figured that out, tapped you on the shoulder, said, hey, I want you to start a sports ministry. What would you say then to the senior pastor to empower and to help that person as to how? Because if you're tapped on the shoulder, you and I both know it isn't just, okay, we're opening up the gym doors and we're putting some balls out and then ministry is going to happen. What would you say to the senior pastor that you would need as uh, the sports minister? Because I think that that's an important thing. Sometimes we don't express or know how to even express what our needs are. But how would you coach someone? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and that's what works nice because that was, yeah, exactly what I had to do is figure out how do I regroup a little bit and uh, put the CSRM plug in uh, or early on in my time, I realized I needed to expand it a little bit from what I had been doing to try to build some sports ministry. And so going through this uh, certification program and podcasts and, and, and trainings has been very helpful. Doing some reading on books specifically about sports ministries, very 
specific niche of books, and so that has been very helpful early on as well. And, and I think just kind of pausing uh, b- before moving forward was helpful because yeah. uh, you, you'll have a lot of voices that will uh, speak into what you should do or what you could do in sports ministry. And uh, er, early on, I just I, I tried to put the pause on it's what, what resources do we already have yeah. as a church? We need to be utilizing those. Um, in our in our case, we we had a disc golf course that kind of w- w- was put in before I was summoned to do sports ministry, so that made it pretty easy. We we have that. Let's utilize it. We have a gym. We have a unique connection with a, a high school, middle school rugby club in our community. It's a club team, but uh, I would guess a third of the coaches in the program uh, attend our church, and so it, 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 th- those are. Uh, resources we already have so yeah. let, let, let's use that um, who has abilities to be involved whether it's coaches or in our case the r- r- rugby coaches yeah. I had a, um, a conversation with the head of our program uh, last week about ways the church can further be involved to help um, these young adults uh, gr- grow and to be cared for and so who has abilities let's plug into that and then there's an avenue of the community needs. What does a community need? And uh, and so be, be, aware, be aware of those. I mean, we, we, we know a gym space seems to be um, still important. Uh, there's field space. Our, our, a lot of our schools where we live are under construction. And so field space, gym space is at a premium. So one of the ways that we have are, are able still to serve now, in fact, that's been a, a new God wave is if we're not doing church programming, we'll open our, our, our gym or our space up to groups using it, but that gives us a chance to build relationships. And so uh, that's how we uh, approached it, rather than just getting into doing uh, wh- whatever the first thing came to mind uh, for, for, for people is, you, w- what do we already have? What are the abilities we have? What are the needs? Let's start building from there. I think that's a, a really practical thing. So if you're if you're a sports minister, I think what Matt just shared is bring information to your, your senior pastor about what you already have. And that, that just takes time. And I think it's slowing down and recognizing, okay, there's a lot of different avenues and resources and user word voices that we could listen to or follow. But sometimes it's right in front of us. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's the people in our congregation uh, the fact by proximity and in our own personal relationship, you knew about CSRM. Thanks for the plug, by the way. Checks in the mail. Uh, but <laughs> I think it's a great opportunity uh, when we slow down enough to say, all right, senior pastor, you told me to do this. I think it's fantastic. Before we do anything, let's evaluate our resources, our relationships, and see mm-hmm. where God is already working. So. Uh, great practical stuff, Matt. Um, any any final words, maybe about how people could contact you, reach you, if they have any questions about what you're doing in in ministry? Yeah, uh, yeah. I pro- probably the best way would just be uh, my email. I would think. I mean, if that, I mean, if that's okay to share. It's, it's, it's my it's my, my my name is the most part of it. Matt uh, Hayden at tri dash village dot org. Uh, but love to be. I can speak to. Certainly, disc golf, uh, connections with the community. We've really done a lot uh, well with that, even expanding beyond sports ministry, just utilizing whatever that resource is. For us, it's been building, it's been space, and so we've been able to leverage that with connections with, with families and organizations from the community. Uh, what, what would also say, maybe maybe two more thoughts. I think it's so important to, um, and this maybe not the exact podcast, but just that self-care piece, I think is yeah. so valuable. Yep. And um, I read a, an illustration several years back now, actually from uh, the book, uh, one of the emotionally healthy books that Peter Cesaro uh, came out with. Uh, but he gives an illustration about, um, and, and Midwest uh, blizzards, there's times where farmers will, uh, there's been cases where farmers have died just feet away from their house, but the blizzard came so fast and the cold came so fast they couldn't find their way and white out conditions back. And so some farmers were t- will tie a rope from their barn to the house. And I, I like that illustration because we need to be able to tie that rope to God. And when uh, the blizzard and busyness of life comes, we have to have that connection. And uh, whether it's sports ministry or... Uh, youth ministry or senior ministry, having that connection, I think is so valuable and something, I mean, I know I fall short many times, but it's also the more 
that I have the grasp on the rope, the, the easier it is to get through the blizzard that life can bring. And so that's something that's been helpful for me. Yeah. And I, that's why I love these podcasts, because people like yourself who are doing ministry, uh, that's, that's the most practical and honestly most important mm-hmm. thing that we can share. Uh, take care of yourself. Be right, mm-hmm. be right with the Lord. Be, mm-hmm. Put him first, uh, because ministry can demand a lot from us. And I, I would tie this back into, and make sure you communicate when you are overwhelmed to your senior pastor. Mm-hmm. If, if it's too much, or you're going through a season, maybe there's some stuff going on with your family, or maybe you just don't feel right, mm-hmm. um, or maybe you've gotten off track with God, the most important thing is, is your relationship with God and with your family and uh, with those under your care and ministry. And if we're not healthy, then we're not going to do a great job. So, so great, mm-hmm. great practical way for us to close there. And we are out of time. And so we thank you so much for joining us for this podcast today. And uh, we sure hope you'll tune in again next week as, uh, as we continue on with a, uh, another CSRM podcast. We're excited about uh, learning from some of our newest staff members. And so uh, be sure to tune in then. Take care, and we'll see you then. The CSRM Podcast is a production of CSRM and their production house, Overwhelming Victory. Dr. Greg Linville is the executive producer, and Scott Stedman is the associate producer and editor. To learn more about CSRM, visit csrm.org. For more information about Overwhelming Victory, visit overwhelmingvictory.org. The CSRM Podcast is the flagship member of the podcast network, Overwhelming Victory Radio. For more information on Overwhelming Victory Radio, or to listen to our partner podcasts, visit overwhelmingvictory.org backslash OV Radio. For CSRM Podcasts, I'm Mike Maloney. Have a blessed day.